So you see those cables going down the pole, which are in behind this steel cable guard going down into concrete ducts, which travel underground and into the transformer. What is up guys? You're watching Bob's Decline. For those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Aaron and I've been a lineman on the east coast of Canada for almost 19 years now. Today we're gonna to be taking a quick look at this thing behind me, pad mount transformer. Now it's called a pad mount transformer because it's mounted on a pad instead of on a pole. When we have our overhead three phase line, if at any point a new customer builds somewhere within the vicinity of this line, it's a pretty easy process to make a riser pole just like this. That's 12,470 volts phase to phase, 7,200 volts phase to ground. We simply use an existing pole such as this one down here, or we can set an A pole somewhere as mid span and we build the structure with the switches, cutouts, and those cables. You see those cables going down the pole which are in behind this steel cable guard going down into concrete ducts which travel underground and into the transformer. So the purpose of the transformer is to bring the voltage down from that 12,470 volts to a usable either 12208 or 347 600 volts which are the most common voltages used in my particular jurisdiction. Different parts around the world have different voltages, different communities, anyways, we're not going to get into that whole lot. One of the things I will mention, there's often a lot of talk, especially during storms, about how come all the power lines aren't buried underground. One of the simple reasons is this line that's behind me, if a customer builds off to it, it's easy to add a Roger pole, a transformer, whatever we need to do, it's easy to add that to the system to feed the customer. Whereas if this entire system was underground, buried, let's say underneath the grass behind me, the customer builds a new shop along here, you can't simply dig up the ground and tap into those cables while they're energized. Those high voltage cables, you would have to isolate them, ground them, dig up, set a new pad. They'd have to be run up into the pad, spliced. Anyways, a whole lot of work and it can't be done, normally can't be done while energized. All right, so let's take a look inside. Nobody is to open this thing but a certified lineman. Somebody that is not only certified but also authorized to do so, of course. So let's flip the camera around. Right now what you're seeing is the secondary side of the transformer. That's where the cables are coming out. This is the low voltage side. We'll open up this other door. It's locked right now. So just give me one second. All right, so we get the other side opened up. Typically we, we open every single one of our pad mounted transformers at least once a year, just to inspect the equipment, make sure that there's no leaks. If there's a temperature gate right up here. You can see that the temperature is at about 25 degrees Celsius and it peaked up around 50. And there's another gauge beside it with the oil level. These guys right up here, those are the fuses. I'm definitely gonna have to make a video one of these days on how to remove those fuses and refuse them. They're quite a bit different than a cutout. One thing I will mention quick, if you do remove those fuses, there's a lot of pressure inside the, uh, the oil tank in these transformers. These transformers, most transformers, or most of the transformers on the power line system, I should say, are oil filled. There certainly are dry types uh, a lot of our transformers are oil filled. If you go to pop that fuse out, you might have hot oil squirt back at you. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is drain the air pressure. That's what this guy is up here, pressure release valve. Grab your hot stick, clip onto that, drain the oil pressure, first thing you do.
Um, this is a feed-through type transformer. So what a feed-through transformer is, we can actually run underground primary wires off this transformer and carry on to the next one. And the voltage won't change in that process. These wires coming off that pole that go underground, that's these guys right here. They come out of the ductwork. We have our uh, red, blue, and yellow phase, or the ABC, and they're all identified on the tags, and they're plugged into the high side of the transformer. So it is, it is a dead front transformer. There's no high voltage uh, exposed wires in these transformers. Um, if we get to work on those elbows, we're gonna use our rubber gloves and hot sticks, even though it's all shield grounded cables. Now what these things are right here are parking stands. If for some reason we wanted to remove that cable off the elbow, it can be done while they're energized. That's what those those two little white marks that identifies that elbow is a load break elbow. So even though there's actually load on this elbow right now on that phase, we can take a hot stick, pop that off. There is a little load break contraption on the, the wire that pokes inside. That's gonna break the load. That could be energized in our stick and you're gonna park that on a contraption that fits right into here. That can all be done with sticks. You can see a little bit of that in one of my videos where we take a look at the volt stick. The only other thing we have in here is this guy, tap changer. That's an offload tap changer. So that's gonna change the tap position on the windings to slightly increase or decrease the ratio between the high and the low side. So let's say we take a voltmeter, we get 340 volts phase to ground. We want to change the tap, we want to increase it, and maybe we'll get 355 volts. That can absolutely only be operated when the unit is de-energized. That's why it says, warning, off circuit switch. Operate only when transformer is de-energized. So that's pretty much it, guys. It's it's a pretty, pretty basic system. High voltage goes in, goes through the windings, low voltage comes out. There's not a whole lot to it, um, obviously. Do not touch anything with these unless you're certified and authorized to do so. Actually, funny thing I noticed, who here has ever seen this guy before? That uh, used to be a little cartoon character when, uh, when I was a kid back in the 80s, when we were in school. They, they called him Louie the Lightning Bug, and uh, there was little cartoons where Louie the Lightning Bug would fly around giving safety tips around power lines. So the only one more thing, maybe I can show you guys on the back. You've got these fins, and that's just for uh, for natural air cooling of the oil. The oil filled is in this portion of the transformer, and there's oil that circulates in through those fins and gets a natural air cooling. So not all of these green boxes are transformers. Some of them are just uh, splice boxes. They could be switching units. Uh, as you've seen in one video, one of them is actually a primary metering tank. So the only other thing I do want to mention, um, you can see that I was wearing my rubber glove when I opened it. I haven't seen it often, but there has been cases where you open the door and one of those elbows had, was damaged and either was half off or uh, there was an animal laying across the bushings. Um, we don't have a whole lot of snakes or anything around here, but I've seen a lot of that in other, in other jurisdictions. For us, there could be muskrats. I've even seen a raccoon. I don't know how he got inside, but a lot of, a lot of, a lot of rodents will get inside these things. It's a good practice that if you're arriving to take a look inside this thing and you're anticipating that there is damage, to de-energize the entire unit before even opening the doors. So that's pretty much it guys. We're gonna lock this thing up. I gotta head back into town. Thanks for checking in and we'll see you guys next time.